Hello, my students. Uh, we meet uh, yet again. And uh, my name is Dr. Kimamo, and I'm going to take you through the unit uh, bed 3213, Subject Methods uh, Biology. And our topic today is the Biology Laboratory. Now, what are, what are my uh, expected uh, learning outcomes? So by the end of uh, uh, the, this uh, lecture this morning, you should be able to state the factors that should be considered in the design of a biology laboratory. You should be able to identify the facilities and the resources that a biology lab should have. You should also be able to explain the contribution of the biology lab to teaching and learning. Uh, number four, you should be able to describe the safety facilities that should be available in the biology lab. Number five, you should be able to explain uh, the safety precautions that should be observed in the biology lab. And lastly, state the safety rules for students that should be displayed while the students are working in the biology lab. Those are my expected learning outcomes. Now, our first uh, subtopic on this uh, biology uh, laboratory design is the location. And the question I would like us to address is uh, what factors should we consider when we are building or designing, designing first, then building a new biology lab? Uh, but before we do that, what is this biology lab that we are talking about? And um, uh, very quickly, um, we can revisit what we had done a little earlier, that the biology lab is a specialized facility for promoting the teaching and learning of uh, biology through practical means. And uh, practical work in biology enhances both the understanding and the retention of basic biological concepts. Uh, and this uh, using a biology for teaching and learning is not a new creation. This biology lab and its uh, use is in tandem with uh, age-old uh, sayings or proverbs, one from the Igbo in Nigeria and another one from China. By coincidence, they talk about the same thing and the, the proverb goes like, what I am told I forget. What I see, I will remember. But what I do, practically now, that builds a castle in my mind. That's the time I understand. Therefore, Biology Lab provides learners with the opportunities to carry out scientific investigations under controlled conditions. Now, what factors should be considered when designing a biology laboratory. Now, the first one is the location. The biology lab should be located away from the classrooms, from the dormitories, from the dining area, and especially because of the poisonous gases or obnoxious smells that emanate from the specimens or the experiments that may be uh, carried out in the biology lab. Uh, the second one, is the orientation of the, the building. The laboratory should be oriented in the east-west east -west direction so that we avoid direct rays of the sun that may interfere with either the specimens or the experiments that we, we may be carrying out. A north-south direction is not recommended unless you have no otherwise. Our third factor to consider is the natural drainage. Uh, during the rain season, uh, we oftentimes have floods, and you do not uh, wish to have uh, uh, your laboratory uh, covered in water, and therefore that is a factor to consider. The natural drainage, it should be located in an area where water can drain uh, naturally without interfering with any building. 
the number four of our one uh, the factors to consider is the student population that would now determine or help you to decide on the size of the lab will it be holding 100 students or 50 students at one sitting so we need to consider that and the last one um, if you are building a new lab it is not the first building in the school or in the institution so there must be a master plan and the biology lab should also follow the master plan of the school so that it doesn't interfere with existing uh, plans for the school farm other laboratories dormitories and so on uh, the next item we would uh, like to consider our small subtopic within uh, our main topic uh, is what facilities and resources should a biology lab have now the first one we need a preparation room this is the one that is being uh, will be used by the lecturer or by the teacher and the lab assistants or the technician uh, the second one we need a lab assistants office where he, he or she can operate uh, from as he does the preparation before the start of any class uh, the next one we need a store for the uh, reagents and the specimens that are used during the experiments we also need a demonstration bench for the teacher so when the teacher is demonstrating a procedure or an equipment like the microscope the teacher will use that table when the students are, are come around it in a semicircular formation and then the teacher can demonstrate how the microscope or any other equipment works uh, we also need the students working benches so when they are carrying out their investigations their whatever activities they are carrying out they need space for that uh, we also need a fume chamber this is a very very essential uh, component in the uh, biology lab whenever the teacher or the students are carrying out experiments that may generate poisonous gases then the fume chamber must be used it is a, a facility designed to make sure that whatever fumes are, are generated do not get to the students or the teacher and there, there is a chimney for that uh, the next one aquarium an aquarium uh, will host either the, the marine or freshwater uh, animals small animals that are used in the uh, experiments we also need uh, water so we have a water tap over a sink uh, we also need a source of heat on the benches for those experiments involving heating and therefore we have the Bunsen uh, burner and several outlets out of that uh, burner we also need uh, electric uh, sockets there are some of the equipment uh, in biology that need to be plugged in for power and uh, lastly <clears throat> we also need a display table at the back there are those experiments that cannot be performed within a short time they may need uh, uh, to go overnight so we have a, a display table that doesn't interfere with the other activities in the biology lab um, other requirements uh, besides uh, those major uh, facilities and uh, uh, resources we need uh, specific equipment for the biology lab uh, for example we have the clinostat that is uh, very useful during the uh, tropisms experiments we also uh, would uh, like to have a centrifuge in the biology lab electronic balances microscopes uh, and so on then we have also the general apparatus like the flasks the conical flasks the bottom uh, the round bottomed uh, flasks beakers pipettes and so on heating apparatus tripod stand wire gauze bunsen burner measuring apparatus like the thermometers the measuring cylinders syringes then the models sometimes you may not have the actual specimen but you can uh, use a model models of the mammalian uh, skeleton that are very common in uh, laboratories you may have a model of the ear when you are talking about the ear the anatomy of the ear the eye the mammalian heart those models help the students to understand how the uh, uh, the structure of that organ uh, much better and just as a reminder a model is a simplified uh, representation of an actual object or specimen that helps us to understand that organ or specimen better and faster uh, we also have uh, reagents like the acids the alkalis uh, ph indicators and so on 
that are very useful uh, when you are carrying out activities. Um, and at this point, I would like to leave you with a small task. Out of all those uh, facilities and uh, resources that uh, we have mentioned, I would like you to identify the activities in which each one of those facilities, equipment is used. Then we have the uh, other non, uh, uh, what shall I say, we have uh, other print media, for example charts, both uh, commercial and uh, teacher made, especially for those that uh, help us to understand the body systems. Uh, we have also photographs that should be in the biology lab, especially for those specimens that we do not find in the, in the country or in the uh, tropical lands. We have uh, things like the polar bear that we, uh, we can only get a photograph of that. Those um, animals and uh, plants that are found in marine environments, in uh, temperate lands, alpine uh, uh, climates. So we need uh, photographs for that. Then uh, motion pictures, which are very, very popular. We need to have DVDs uh, that show life cycles of animals, uh, plants, uh, coral ecology, marine life, mammalian body systems, and so on. And um, of course, you also need dissection kits for each of uh, the students in the class, so that whenever we are carrying out any uh, demonstrations, the students can be able to do it on their own at their working benches. Now, uh, the next uh, small subtopic is um, how does the biology lab contribute uh, to teaching and learning? Uh, the first one I would like to mention, it offers opportunities for students to carry out systematic search for solutions to problems in a scientific way. There is a, if, I want, if I remind you, we have gone through the scientific process, uh, scientific method, and the biology lab offers those opportunities for you to follow that procedure up to the end. Uh, the next one, it uh, provides the learners with the tools to be able to conduct those investigations or experiments <coughs> under controlled conditions without interference from outside. Uh, the next one, it enables uh, uh, students to acquire scientific knowledge or information. It enables the students to acquire relevant skills, attitudes and values as they carry out the experiments in the lab. Uh, the next one is uh, learners are usually very highly motivated in the lab because they are not just sitting, they are doing something on their own. And uh, lastly, which is a very, very important uh, principle in education, the biology lab uh, helps students to learn how to learn. Discovering information on their own is, uh, it becomes very exciting. Um, the next uh, uh, small subtopic under the biology laboratory is safety considerations in the lab. Much as uh, we, would, we appreciate uh, the contribution the biology lab uh, makes to teaching and learning, it has also its uh, demerits. It can be a source of um, injuries, it can be a source of discomfort, and therefore there are some safety considerations <coughs> that we should have in mind whenever we are working in the lab. It is a potential source of hazards that can uh, cause injury or death. So mitigation measures must be put in place. For example, we need to have uh, fire extinguishers And uh, remember, there are fire extinguishers of different uh, types. We have the gas type, we have the water type, we have the powder type, and all these uh, should be available in the biology lab uh, to mitigate uh, fires that may occur once in a while. Uh, alongside the fire extinguishers, we need a water hose. A water hose will be very useful because you can direct a jet of water to where uh, the source of a uh, fire is and extinguish it uh, before it spreads. Uh, we also need a, a woolen uh, rug or a heavy blanket. Mm -hmm. uh, you may wonder, this is not for the students who may be dozing in the afternoon, no. This is in the event of somebody catches uh, fire. We can uh, quickly cover the person with a blanket to cut out the oxygen and therefore extinguish the fire. Uh, we have mentioned the fume chamber uh, a little earlier on. 
on the fume chamber, all the specimens, all the experiments that uh, may generate poisonous gases, that's where they should be performed as a safety uh, measure. Uh, then we also need a first aid box, just in case of uh, those uh, minor injuries, uh, we should be able to uh, help uh, the injured person by using the equipment and the medicines that are in the first aid box. Then uh, on a personal level, we need to have protective uh, clothing. We need a dust coat, we need gloves, closed shoes, uh, and so on. Uh, other safety considerations that every uh, biology lab uh, uh, should have in mind is both the entry and the exit doors, they should open outwards, not inwards. So that in case of a, a stampede, the students will try to get out, but if the door opens inwards, there will be no chance because they all want to get out and the doors will not open. But when the doors open outwards, they can actually kick them open and they open and they will be able to get out of the, the lab. Then all the windows, all the doors and windows should be open so long as there is some activity going on in the biology lab. So that ensures uh, ventilation and if there is any gas that is, uh, uh, could be harmful, it will be swept away by uh, the natural uh, flow of air. Then we have the stock bottles, stock bottles that hold 20-30 liters of uh, acids or alkalis. This one should be stored far away from the benches. It should, they should be stored in the, either the preparation uh, room or the biology uh, lab assistant uh, prepares or in the storeroom. We also have the poisonous substances that are also required in the biology lab. This one should be kept under lock. Many people talk about lock and key, but if you have kept, if you have kept them under lock and the key is there, what are you doing? So it should be just lock and no authorized person should have access to the key that opens the, uh, that lock. Then the master gas uh, supply tank or cylinder that should be uh, positioned outside the lab, uh, but where it is uh, uh, placed, it should be fenced. And then the gate valve that uh, lets in uh, the gas should be secured that, such that nobody can go and uh, turn on or off unless they have uh, authority to do so. Then uh, the main electric switch uh, in the lab it should have uh, multiple stations so that in case of any uh, danger posed by electricity, somebody can quickly rush to the nearest uh, switch and switch power um, so that the person doesn't get uh, electrocuted or injured in any other way. Then uh, lastly, safety rules that me and you, all the students should observe when they are working in the biology lab they are expected to adhere to those rules that protect them. And uh, we shall just have a quick uh, look at some of the examples. Uh, one is the biology lab is out of bounds to all students unless authorized by either the teacher or the lab assistant. Uh, secondly, you should not taste anything that is in the biology lab, whether it is edible or inedible. Uh, the next one is uh, you should not drink or eat anything uh, in the biology lab and then uh, the next one is when you are heating substances in a test tube the mouth of the test tube should face away from you and from the group members uh, uh, who are uh, present uh, when you are carrying out the activity then uh, handling of apparatus all the apparatus uh, that are being used in the biology lab should be handled with care but in case of uh, breakages this should be reported to the lab assistant so that action can be taken before they become uh, they pose a danger to the users. And uh, lastly, in case of a fire outbreak, you should switch off all the the electricity, the gas, and then you can use the relevant uh, equipment like the fire extinguishers we had, the the water hose, and and so on to extinguish the fire before you call out for help. And we always say this old uh, adage, prevention is a thousand times better than cure. So you should be safe in the laboratory at all times. 
And as we wrap up our, our lesson uh, this morning, we need to look at uh, what have we discussed uh, uh, today. So in today's uh, lecture, remember we have talked about the value that a biology lab adds to teaching and learning, the design of the uh, biology lab, the facilities and the resources that a biology lab should have, the contribution that the biology lab can make in teaching and learning. We have also looked at the safety facilities that a biology should have, and lastly, the safety precautions and rules that should be observed in the biology lab. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.